Hey, it's Mayora and it's almost Pesach. I'm getting geared up. Wow. Yeah, swear to God, I'm with it. I haven't done my cleaning yet, which I am going to start tomorrow, but it's really just my room because I live in my sister's house. So um, it's really not too much to deal with. Um, I'm really just kind of prepping and planning because it's going to be a long um, series of days that are like Shabbat then Yom Tov. So it's a pretty unique year, which I actually think is super cool. So I'm getting like all ramped up um, for it. And I think mostly I just have to figure out like the timers for my, um, my lights are already set on a timer for Shabbat, but just extending the settings and um, figuring out like when my warming tray will turn on and um, just kind of like doing my meal planning. So it's really not so bad since I'm doing it just for myself. Um, last year was really my first um, my first Pesach being observant um, but I'm sure that this year um, will just be kind of like leveled up all, all the more so just being a full year um, further into my observance um, and before that I really just had like a handful of Pesachs that I had gone to different people's houses and things so um, I feel like this year I feel like this, you know, last year was the first time I really like thoroughly went through the whole Haggadah and um, this year I'm actually using the Breslov Haggadah, which I really love um, and I'm super psyched about it. I've been studying through it and um, just love all the little commentaries and stuff. So I feel like I'm going to have a really good, um, good go of it this year. Um, so I'm excited for the sitters and things like that. but. I have to say, I'm actually getting way more excited for the period after Pesach, which is um, Sfer, Sfer, I always jumble my words when I say this, which is Sefirat, Sefirat HaOmer, um, Sefirat HaOmer, um, which is a period of 49 days um, from the second day of Pesach, I believe, leading up until Shavuot. And the first time I heard of it, honestly, last year was the first time I ever counted the Omer, and I thought like, Okay, this is kind of interesting, but I didn't really get that much out of it, to be honest. Um, basically, at the most elementary level, every single day, you are counting, uh, literally counting the Omer. And the Omer is a barley offering, and for 49 days, you're counting, today is the first day of the Omer, today is the second day of the Omer, and there's a blessing preceding it and such. But you literally say, like today, I'm counting the fifth day of the Omer on and on until the 49th day. Um, on the 50th day is Shavuot, and Shavuot marks the beginning of bringing the wheat offering. And so one of the levels, um, one of the sort of teachings of this period is that we start off with a grain offering of barley, which is really animal feed um, is how we look at it. Um, so we're starting from our most animal souls from our, you know, from the level of our nefesh. And then as we lead up throughout the period of the 49 days and continually refine ourselves on a spiritual level, we reach Shavuot, which is a time where um, you would offer the wheat offering. So wheat is more like the, the grain for humans. So we're ascending from the level of the animal to the human. So that's just in a very brief nutshell, the idea at a very elementary level um, of the counting of the Omer. Um, but last year I had started to learn um, that every single day there's this combination of different spherot, which are manifestations of Hashem. So you can learn about that when you Google it or whatever, um, different uh, Kabbalistic um, ideas there. But um, essentially every single day of the Omer you have a different combination of different sphero, which are essentially characteristics, um, which could be like strength or beauty, perseverance, um, things like that, judgment. Um, so you can look those up. It's really cool to um, study. But anywho, so you have all these different days, these 49 um, different combinations of, um, of these different uh, qualities. And you're essentially supposed to look into the meaning of these qualities and um, grow from them and refine yourself in um, each of these different characteristics. So I kind of did that last year. Basically, I would watch different YouTube videos from one of my favorite rabbis, um, Rabbi Alon Anava, um, who has a really awesome like series of um, different days of counting the Omer, and he would go into the meaning of these different character traits, and I used that as a guide for my Sefirat HaOmer period last year. And I thought it was great. I got, um, you know, I got a lot out of it to an extent, but um, I felt still a little bit removed from it. It still felt like, okay, I'm just reading these different, you know, accounts like every day and it feels a little bit mechanical. And again, it was my first run of it and I feel like most things in Jewish practice and in observance, like when you get into it, it does feel a little mo mechanical until you really make it yours. So that's what I'm trying to do this year. And I'm actually super excited because what I'm going to do, um, 
for every day of the Omer count is um, really start to apply like this count off, this goal countdown factor into a more personal sense. And so for me, what I'd really like to kick and really like to focus on in terms of refining myself is my uh, my eating and my my relationship to food and um, just really essentially eating more clean. Um, so what I'm going to do is kind of like a mishmash of what um, what I think is mostly described as like the whole 30 diet um, or like a keto diet, um, which I'm also pescatarian. So basically I am omitting now, I'm cutting out grains, dairy, and any kind of added sugar, which even includes honey. So any kind of sweeteners, um, which will leave me with eggs, fish, and produce. And I just feel like that's a huge thing for me because I have eaten that way in the past and I've felt like amazing every time I eat that way. I feel like it's just the most natural, um, intuitive way to eat but of course I stray off the path and we'll start eating like mozzarella sticks and pad thai and all sorts of junk <laughs> um, so I just want to use this time as a way to just shed my COVID weight like my COVID weight to be honest and um, just kind of get back into the core of holy eating and really when we think about kashrut we often think about what we can eat and can eat but it's so much about the way like how we eat as well so I feel like that is um, kind of a core part of my tikkun to be honest and something I really just need to rectify so I'm going to use this period of counting the omer to just have this very strict clean diet I'm also going to be exercising a lot more, um, you know, just more routinely, just on an everyday cycle, um, essentially. And I also will be doing intermittent fasting. So I'm going to be e eating this very clean diet um, only between the hours of 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. So basically having a 20-hour fast and a four-hour feed every day. Of course, Shabbat is an exception, but I don't want to, like, let myself go too far with the exception um, and just, like, go ham and just eat a bunch of junk. So essentially... On Shabbat, I'm going to allow myself um, a more free feeding schedule. I'm not going to fast, um, which we're not supposed to do on Shabbat. Um, so I'll eat, you know, from like lunch and, and so on. Um, and I will, of course, eat grains from the uh, matzah or challah that I eat, you know, for Shabbat in the, um, on Friday night and on um, Saturday afternoon. And I, as my little cheat, my little indulgence, is going to be allowing myself one glass of milk because I happen to love milk and I just love dairy products. Um, but I figured milk is more nourishing um, than cheese. So um, that's like my little like woo, like wild day to like have just a little bit of challah and uh, one milk. So um, that's going to be my diet throughout the entire period of Sifrat HaOmer, which is 49 days, um, which I feel like will be just a great boost for me, um, especially just getting into these warmer months and all I just feel like I need to get more active and stuff so um you know, in addition to that, I really want to just full cycle, just really be mindful of what I'm eating, how I'm eating, and making sure that I'm really like committing to my brachot. I think, to be totally honest, there are times that I'm just kind of mumbling the bracha and kind of like saying it quickly, or if I'm in front of someone, I won't say it kind of as loud and proud as I should. So um, those are things that I really want to correct within myself, and I really do feel like so much of the human rectification is to go through this process of learning holy eating. And I have plugged this book before, um, I think at some point, um, but I just love this book called um, The Tikkun of Eating by Sarah or Susan Yehudit Schneider. And I highly recommend it. It's like a $10 book or something. It's very small, but she just goes into such amazing points about um, just this fall of Adam all the way to now and how we use food as a way to just take from the world, but how it it can be something that really elevates us um, on a spiritual level. So I really um, do want to focus on that and that's going to be my one like hard goal. Um, and I was also, as I was reading my Breslov um, Haggadah, I was um, really taken by um, a teaching that I've, I've read before and I just forgot about where um, I believe is Rabbi Nachman and it might have been the Baal Shem Tov, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was um, Rabbi Nachman who taught that um, you know, just to focus on one mitzvah and just to focus on one mitzvah to do very, very stringently or just one observance to be very, very stringent on and everything else like 
you know, be gentle on yourself and like, you know, give yourself a little bit of flexibility. And first of all, I just love that coming from a total chassid, um, who was obviously, you know, realistically stringent. Um, but of course he had just this total Breslov like attitude of, um, just this free flowing, um, just natural way of serving Hashem. So I just love that whole philosophy and in applying it to, um, this idea for me, it's, I think like the act of holy eating is my, is going to be like, I'm going to adopt that as my like one real stringent thing that I always do. Like no matter what I'm very hyper focused on and everything else I'll be a little more gentle on. And again, that's not to say that I'm, you know, leveling down in my observance or anything. If anything, it's the other way um, around, but just in terms of what my core focus is, um, in terms of my Jewish, Jewish observance, I really want to focus on this act of holy eating. So that's it. That's my plan for um, Sfrat HaOmer and I'm super excited. And um, so as much as I'm like excited about Pesach, like it's kind of like my last kicks in terms of having grains and having cheese. Um, and I'm going to have some macaroons and, you know, some sweets and things like that. But I'm not going to go crazy because I know I'm winding down. Um, and I am going to be super excited to just start like counting the Omer because for me, now that I have this like very like hardcore self-sacrifice, at least for me, it's hardcore to eat super clean and have that four hour feeding window every day like that's going to be tough for me um so to have something that i'm really kind of grinding through i'm sure i'm going to have a lot of um you know yet sahara moments like it's going to be tough so i love that i have something really like hard to um just a really like, a big challenge to overcome throughout this period which is very much about us elevating ourselves spiritually so there's another teaching tied to this idea of these like 49 days of counting the omer which is that there are 50 gates of impurity or 50 levels of impurity and 50 levels of purity and holiness and so the idea is that when we left Mizraim when we left Egypt we were at that like 49th like nearly to that 50th like ultimate level of just defilement of impurity and once we broke free from that we had to climb up every level back to a state of purity so um, essentially we're going from the this place of descent this place of exile um, you know this is place of constriction and we're finding our way back to holiness. So every day um, that Bnei Israel had to uh, move from Egypt going all the way to Sinai, it was every day shedding, um, you know, just these old habits, these old traits, and finding their way back to holiness one day at a time. So in counting the Omer for 49 days, we're really re recollecting and reliving that aspect of what um, our forefathers did. So I really love that um, that teaching and that, that connection because I really... Um, I, you know, for me, it really resonates when we talk about how all of the Jewish holidays are actually happening now as well, and we really need to uh, make them personal. And I personally, like, I don't think that that's just in a metaphorical sense. I think there is a metaphysical, energetic aspect to that. So I take it quite seriously. Um, and so I feel really excited to to claim um, this observance a lot more personally and in a way that's really going to help me elevate myself this year um, rather than last year where I was kind of learning along, um, like I said, those uh, Rabbi Lone Anava videos, which I definitely recommend um, you guys to check out. Is It is a great guide as well. Um, but yeah, I just, I feel like I'm really kind of claiming my own personal, um, you know, my personal goal, like as I go through this. Um, and on top of this kind of leads me to the other purpose of this video, which just to say that um, during the period of Sefirat HaOmer, we also go in through um, a process of mourning. And what we're mourning is the death of Rabbi Kiva's students. Um, that's a whole different thing. I will actually drop a link um, to some more information on that if you want to learn more about why we're mourning during this period. But essentially, we um, refrain from, you know, we just kind of go into mourning customs for um, in Judaism, which include not, you know, having any weddings. Um, we don't cut our hair. Uh, we don't wear new clothes. And we don't listen to music, um, instrumental music specifically. So um, last year, I did do that for 50 days, or I think it might have been a little more than that. I didn't listen to music. But to be honest, um, as peaceful as that was, um, it's not a huge sacrifice for me because music, you know, I enjoy it, but I don't think it's something that's like a huge, huge part of my life per se. Um, so for me, what I actually think will be more meaningful is to not only cut out the music during this period, but I'm really taking a social media detox and just a media and content detox. Um, 
And I, compared to most people, really don't take in too much of this stuff. But I do watch a good amount of YouTube here and there, and um, generally speaking, I'm just kind of smashing down a lot of learning-based things. It's usually almost always like tourist stuff um, with the occasional comedy thing here and there. And um, I do watch like news um, a little bit. So um, lately, I feel like I've been watching, you know, typically I don't watch any news, but ever since the elections, I kind of like kicked me back into like checking out the news. And if, of course, I like COVID and stuff, I just kind of like to peek and see what's going on. So um, I don't think any of that's really healthy and useful, to be honest. So I'm just going to cut all that out. And um, with that said, I decided I'm really not going to be posting on YouTube for a little while, um, at least I believe until Lag Be Omer, which is when we lift um, some of the morning period. Um, my custom that I've adopted is to only lift the morning practices during Lag Be Omer and then continue them on until Shavuot. Um, some people just kind of like cut it off from that point on. But anyway, um, on Lag Be Omer, I may end up posting, I may end up sharing something, and I'm not kind of my, committing myself like hard to this. I may end up really feeling like I want to share something, and in that case, I will. But other than that, I'm really planning to um, just kind of like take this time to focus on myself, um, really focus on this clean eating, this holy eating, um, my exercise, dropping my COVID weight, um, and just kind of getting some projects done. So. Um, with that, I just want to thank you guys all for supporting me and supporting this channel. I'm very close to hitting 1K, which is super exciting. So my battery died apparently, and I just realized that hours later as I was sitting down to edit that video. Um, but anyway, I've got Bilbo here to say hello and goodbye with me. But anyway, as I was saying, um, it will be a little while till I see you guys again. And I also encourage you guys to just join in on this practice of really customizing, personalizing what it is that you're going to focus on during this period of 49 days. I hope you can find your own way to really make this time meaningful and just customize this to whatever you feel like you need to rectify, what you need to refine, to really just elevate yourself spiritually leading up until Shavuot. So other than that, I will see you guys shortly. Shalom Alechem.